Hi guys, welcome back to History with Mrs. Lee. Today we are going to look at the Bill of Rights and we are going to use Katie Lofton from YouTube. We're gonna use her hand signals to help us remember what each of the amendments are. All right, so we're gonna start off with Amendment 1, also called wraps. So you take one finger and you're going to use this following the pictures on the screen for freedom of religion. And with freedom of religion, we think about groups like the Catholics, the Quakers, the Puritans, and the Pilgrims, who all came to America to escape persecution. Freedom of assembly, and that means that you have the right to protest peacefully. You can assemble with people who want to protest the government and ask for some changes. Freedom of petition, you can petition the government to make changes. And think about the Olive Branch petition, how we ask the king to change his ways and protect the rights of the people during the American Revolution. Freedom of the press. The press would be like the news, the media. This allows the news and media to basically state what they feel about the government without worry of them being incarcerated or put in jail, as they may have had done to them during the American Revolution if they had said anything bad about the King of Parliament. And finally, freedom of speech. Freedom of speech or freedom of, of expression, that allows people to say what they think without worry of being put into jail or fined. So moving on to the Second Amendment, you have the right to bear arms or own a weapon and use it to protect yourself and your family. This was important to the Americans in 1787 because think about the event of Lexington and Concord. The king had sent the British military to Lexington and Concord to destroy the militia's weapons. And so the Americans wanted to make sure that in the event that the government ever tried to harm its citizens, the citizens would have weapons to protect themselves from the government. All right, in regards to the Third Amendment, we think of no quartering of troops or threes a crowd or like third wheeling. This might not seem like a big deal to you in 2019, but it was a huge deal back in 1787 when these Americans had just been through a revolution where the king and parliament were telling them that they would have to house strangers in their homes, pay for them, pay for their ammunition, feed them, and basically have this huge invasion of their privacy. And so the Americans who wrote um, the constitution at the convention wanted to make sure this never happened again. With the Fourth Amendment, you hold four fingers up and then hide your thumb because we think of no search and seizure without a warrant. And this brings us back again to the Revolution and we think of writs of assistance. How basically soldiers were allowed to come into your home at any time that they suspected you may have smuggled goods. So today you need a warrant, a search warrant signed by a judge for the police to enter your home and to take things. Okay. Now, the first, second, third, and fourth amendments, what do they all have in common? Well, basically, they're all grievances from the Declaration of Independence. And this is our way to ensure that we don't have these problems in our new country. What we had experienced during the revolution, we don't want that to happen again now that we are a democracy and we are in charge of ourselves. All right, moving on to the fifth amendment, you take all five fingers and cover your mouth. This reminds us that you have the right to remain silent. Um, sometimes you hear people in TV shows say, I plead the fifth, or you hear cops say, um, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say or do can and will be used against you in a court of law. Now, this is to protect the rights of accused criminals. Basically, if you're accused of a crime, if you don't want to answer a question from a police officer, a detective, etc., you don't have to. And this is to make sure that you don't self-incriminate. You don't want to say something that could end up making you look guilty, especially if you didn't do it. Okay, now with the Fifth Amendment though, we also know that um, all people who are accused of a crime are due a process from the government. So due process means I can't just say, you're guilty, you did it, I'm gonna lock you up for 30 years. You are due a process. The government is going to have to let you have a trial to prove whether you are innocent or guilty. The Sixth Amendment, you're gonna point to your watch on your wrist. And this is to remind us that um, all people have the right to a quick and speedy trial by jury. Now, if you are accused of a crime, you don't want to have to sit in jail for four years before somebody will listen to your case. Also, we like the idea of a trial by jury instead of just one judge listening to decide if we're innocent or guilty. 
Instead, we can have a group of peers, people who may be similar to us, who listen to our story and decide if we're innocent or guilty. Also, with the Sixth Amendment, you have the right to a lawyer. Lawyers are expensive, so if you can't afford one, the government will provide you with a lawyer. Now, with the Sixth Amendment, this is all in regards to criminal cases. But in the Seventh Amendment, you're going to hold up two fingers and then five fingers on the other, and you're going to turn that five into a zero. This is in regards to civil cases. You also have the right to a trial by jury if you are dealing with a civil case, which is non-criminal, and it has to be over $20. So say you and your neighbor are arguing about building a fence between your houses and your neighbor isn't paying his share. You have the right to take him to a trial by jury and let the jury decide what he needs to pay. Each amendment, you're going to put your hands behind your back like you're in handcuffs. And this is um, to remind us that there are no cruel and unusual punishments and no excessive fines or fees. So let's say that somebody steals a bicycle from Walmart. That person cannot be put in jail for 45 years. That would be a cruel or unusual punishment. Also, um, let's say that you get a ticket for parking your car illegally in front of your house in the cul-de-sac your fine has to be something reasonable. It can't be $1 million. Now with the 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th Amendments, these are all rights of the accused because sometimes we don't catch the bad guys and sometimes innocent people are actually accused of something that they never did. So we wanna protect all people who have been accused of a crime, make sure that they are given due process, make sure that their rights are not violated and that they really get a chance to prove their innocence. The Ninth Amendment, you're going to hold up nine fingers, and you're going to remember that these are rights not enumerated. Basically, just because a right is not explicitly or specifically written in the Constitution doesn't mean that you don't have that right. I think of your thumb that's um, still down as maybe somebody sitting in a wheelchair, somebody who's handicapped. In 1787, there's not something specifically written in the Constitution about rights of people who have disabilities and handicaps, but do they have rights in our country? Of course they do. So if maybe their business is not providing them with a wheelchair ramp or maybe access to an elevator if needed, they could use the Ninth Amendment to protect themselves and sue their business. Finally, the Tenth Amendment is basically the best representation of the constitutional principle of federalism. You put all 10 fingers in the air and you raise up your hands because any power that is not reserved by the federal government is allowed to be taken by the states. So, for example, states um, have the right to make laws about the speed limits in their states on their highways. That right was not taken by the national government, so the states can quickly grab that up. Okay. That concludes our lesson on the Bill of Rights. Make sure that you practice your hand signals and remember to study for your upcoming quizzes and tests. Have a great day.